Let's pray first. Our Father and our God, we need you to be the teacher today. So send your spirit to speak to the hearts and minds of everyone here this morning. Give us understanding and make what we learn be part of the way we live. This blessing we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There are those here who will, who will be baptized into the family of God today. It's not only the most important decision that you'll make in life, but it's also the best. When you are spending eternity with God, you'll look back on this day and be glad that you made the choice to do this. The title of our topic this morning is Newborns. And this is not only for those who are going to be baptized a little later today. But it's also for us who have already been baptized. So the message is for all. Now, there are a few things that I want to make clear first. I want us to understand that the truth is progressive. That means you learn a little at a time. God is merciful, so he always takes us step by step by step. But our progress is only or always one step higher. If we're not making forward or upward progress, then that's not the progress that God is giving. Now, God is a fair God. God does not hold anyone guilty for what they do not know. You see, God reads the heart and the mind. God knows what we understand and what we don't understand. God knows what he has revealed to us. And God holds us accountable for what he knows he has revealed to us. So when God reveals to each of us truth, He expects us to obey that truth. When God knows that it's clear to our hearts and minds, He expects us to obey. Now, 
When God knows that we understand and it's clear to us and we do not obey, then God holds us guilty. So the more we learn and understand, the more God expects of us. As we learn, God expects us to obey. But remember, we started off saying that the truth is progressive. We learn more and more and more. Jesus says, you shall know the truth, and the truth is the thing that will set you free. Let me tell you what the enemy of God wants to do to us. And he has always used this method. He wants to teach us something that's false. And then he wants to make us believe that that's true. And that way, he has us obeying that which is falsehood. And so God is in the business of revealing to us the truth step by step by step. That's why it's important for us to be baptized into the truth. It's not good enough just to be baptized. We must be baptized to the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. God has a calling on your life. God has a job that he has created you to fulfill. But he cannot send you forward to fulfill your mission until you are established in the truth. Everything is not the truth. The opinions of people are not necessarily the truth. What God says and declares is the truth. And if we study the truth carefully, we'll see that it has always been something that the majority never followed. The majority of people who say that they're religious never at any point in biblical history followed the truth. That's why God calls his people the remnant, a small number of people. So what's important is for us to learn what the truth is. Be baptized into what the truth is. Does it matter what the majority is doing? It doesn't matter what some other religious organization said. 
If it's not what God said, we cannot follow it. Because after we are baptized into the truth, we are then the teachers of the truth. You remember, Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth is the thing that will set you free. We're going to talk about newborn. The first text I want to look at is in John chapter 21, the Gospel of John. And I want to read verses 15 through 17. Lu this is a lesson that Jesus taught to Peter, but it's for a lesson for us also. Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me? Peter declared, Yes, Lord, I love you. Many of us say that we love God. And we ought to love God. But Jesus taught us a lesson here. It's not just for Peter, it's for each of us. Jesus told Peter, if you love me, and because you love me, I want you to feed my lambs. He's not just talking about physical bread that we eat every day. He's primarily talking about spiritual food, spiritual bread. And Jesus started off the lesson with telling Peter to feed his lambs. Those are baby sheep. Those who are new in the church. Those who are newborn babes in Christ. Those who are weak in the church. Every member of the church has the job of feeding the lamb. And 
Jesus says, if you love me, this is what you'll do. Too many church members do nothing but just come to church. They make no attempt to feed anybody anything as far as spiritual bread. Jesus said, if you love me, this is what you'll do. And you start with the lambs, the young in the faith. And then he asked Peter two more times. Because he's trying to make the point clear. He said, Peter, do you love me? And each time Peter declared, yes, I love you. We say we love the Lord. And both times he told him, if you love me and because you love me, I want you to feed my sheep. He changed it from the lamb to the sheep. So he wants us not only to feed those who are young in the faith, but those who are older and more mature in the faith. It's our job to help each other. It's our job to bless each other. It's our job to pray for each other. Spiritually, it's our job to feed each other. That's what we automatically do if we love the Lord. So those who are going to be Born into the family of God today. It's the job not just of pastors, but it's the job of every member to feed those lambs. Visit them in their home. You don't see them in church, call them. Go by to visit them, feed them, help them, bless them. That shows that you love the Lord. Now, I want to talk about three other very important things. And I'm talking especially to those who are baptized today. But I'm also talking to church members. Because on these three things, many in the church have failed. That's one of the reasons why churches all over the world are filled with people who are spiritually dead. They come to church, but they're spiritually dead. They come to church, but they don't spend the week talking to others about Jesus. They don't do that. They come to church, but even those who can read spend no time in reading their Bible. They come to church, but they don't spend any time in real prayer and communion with God. They're dead spiritually. I said that they are dead spiritually. That's why they live like that. That is not acceptable with God. 
And we need to get that clear in our hearts and in our mind. Now I want to read Peter, 1 Peter, chapter 2. Verses 2 through 5. Linda la e yang go to me you all, Molia when you call you law. Go change you, your town how mean the pound you play, or don't who? Go no, beyond the John you mean the you or don't you? Law, law, sort of talk a deep. Beyond dear Nato she, Nato sha. What you talk a wrong talk a cool lane, the what you love. Go net churn to your what you. Yo these texts are very important. First of all, it tells us those who are going to be born again today, that we are newborn babes. And it lets you know that you are chosen of God and precious. It also points out to you that you are born into a holy priesthood. You have a job. But the part that I want to stress right now is that the Bible says you are newborn babes. No baby is born full grown. How much can a newborn baby do? How much can a newborn baby do? Can a newborn baby do much? Has anyone seen a newborn baby right after he's born he just walks off? I don't think so. Who's seen a newborn baby born and he's talking? Nobody. A newborn baby has to learn. A newborn baby has to grow. A newborn baby will make many, many mistakes. That's part of growing and learning. So as newborn in the Lord, understand that. You're learning. You're growing. A baby falls down many times before he learns to walk. And even after he learns to walk, oftentimes during his life, he will trip and fall. Don't become discouraged.
So If you fall, get up. If you make a mistake, ask God to forgive you and press on in faith. Never become discouraged and never give up on yourself. That's the thing that the devil wants. He wants us to give up on ourselves and just turn around and go back into the world into, into sin. But there's something else very important that the Bible reveals to us here. It tells us how a newborn grows and becomes strong. It tells us that we have to take in the milk or the nourishment of the word. This is where many in the church have made a deadly mistake. Suppose you have a newborn baby. And the baby is perfectly strong and perfectly healthy when he's born. But you take him into your house, sit him in a corner, and feed him only once a week. How long will that baby stay alive? How long? It wouldn't be long. I'm trying to share something with you, those who are going to be baptized today. A baby can be born perfectly healthy. A baby can be born strong. But if you don't feed that baby many times every day, he will weaken and die soon. Many people in churches all over the world were born into the family of God strong. But very, very soon thereafter, they were dead. They starved themselves to death. They didn't waste time taking in spiritual nourishment, spiritual milk. Therefore, they weakened and died. Many people try to live spiritually only by coming to church, listening to the pastor once a week. If that's what you do, for absolute certain, you are spiritually dead. A newborn baby eats several times a day. Those who will be born again today, do that. Morning, noon, night, and in between time, take in some spiritual bread. The Bible calls it the milk of the word that we might grow thereby. And those who are members of the church, you want to come back to life again? 
Start feeding that spiritual man, that spiritual baby in you. Who may be dead and have been dead for years. Feed the spiritual person inside. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians 5.17. This is the second thing that is of great importance. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. It The Bible tells us, and this is a command, to pray without ceasing. The Bible is commanding us to keep in communion and in touch with God. Every day, all of the day, let your mind be drawn heavenward. Communicate with God in your heart and in your mind. When you get up in the morning, be doing it. When you're working in the field, be doing it. When you're on your way to the field, when you're on your way back home, be doing it. When you're resting in your house, be doing it. Before you go to bed, do it. First thing in the morning when you wake up, do it. <laughs> Jesus says, abide in me. The Bible says, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. Keep in communion with God. We've named two things. Eat plenty of spiritual bread. And stay in communion and union with God. You do those two things and you'll be strong. If you don't do those two things, even though you may come to church, you'll be dead spiritually. Now, there are results in doing those two things. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 tells us what, what it is. Now, there's a promise that God makes to those who are baptized. According to the Bible, when one is baptized, they then receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, 
the Holy Spirit has several jobs inside of you. One of them is to give you power to obey. He also changes you. He also teaches you. He also comforts your heart. But he also uses you as a witness. Everywhere you go, you are a witness for God there. This is something that too many people in the church don't do. If you're in a market, you are a witness for God there. In your village, you are a witness for God there. Anywhere and everywhere you go, you are to be God's witness. That's one of the reasons why God gives to you His Holy Spirit. So you can be a powerful witness for Him. Remember, Today, those who are baptized, you're born into a holy priesthood. Too many in the church are baptized, but they don't do what they are baptized to do. That simply means their baptism means nothing at all. And we need to be honest about this. The end of the world is here at hand. So wherever you are, you are God's representative right there. So God calls on you after you are born of Him to continually and daily eat spiritual bread and drink spiritual milk. God says you will grow and be strong that way. God also says, and it's a commandment, Pray without ceasing. God says, stay in communion with me. Stay in union and in connection with me. God says, talk to me all of the time and I will guide you all of the time. God says, talk to me all of the time and I will teach you in any and every situation. God says, pray without ceasing. And then God says, he gives you his Holy Spirit so that you can be an ambassador for him. It's your job to tell other people about the Savior of the world. God is counting on you to do that. That's one of the reasons why He has made you a son and a daughter of His. So you can represent Him. You need to come into the church being a strong child of God. 
Don't follow the example of people in the church who do absolutely nothing. This is a special day today. No, no, you know what he said. God is going to give people a new birth. No, no, what you are telling to you the children, no, no. There may be others here this morning who, at this point, still want to choose to be baptized into the family of God. Then you are more can lay Lucia, no, what side you would, so you would change God after what you watch in it here. And if that's you, we want to give you a moment just to stand where you are. It's not too late. I want to have a special prayer for those who are going to be baptized. So I'd like for you to stand. And as we pray out loud for these group of uh, young people, I want the rest of the congregation to stand also. And I want the rest of the congregation to pray also. And I want you to pray for these who will be born into the family of God today. But I want you also to pray for yourself. Because there are some here who come to church but they're dead. And today, you need to choose to change that. So now let's talk to God in prayer. It's okay. 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 It's Vijolaplonin Nishata.